Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to make parts move in the game, just like the one you see in front of me. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. The first thing we're going to do is add a part into the game. To do that, just come up to the top and click on the blue cube. Next, we're going to be adding a script onto this part. So you can click on this part, locate it in the Explore menu, and click on the plus sign. We're going to be adding a script to this part. Go ahead and delete the print hello world message. And the first thing we're going to do is create a variable as a reference for this part. So we're going to say local part is equal to script dot parent. The way we're going to move this part is we're going to take its current position and add something new to it. So to do that, we're going to say part dot position is going to be equal to part dot position again plus a new vector. So it's going to be vector three dot new. And then inside the parentheses will be the X, the Y, and the Z position that we're going to change. And to be able to continually change these numbers, we're going to include this in a while true loop. To do that, we're going to say while true, and then the word do. We're going to tab this line right here, and then write the word end right here. To start this off, let's go ahead and just change the X position. So to do that, let's go ahead and put a one here, a zero right here, and a zero right here. So what this will do is every time it loops through this while true loop, it's going to take the part's current position and add one to the X position. Since the computer can run this program extremely fast, we need to add a small delay time right here. So we can start this off with something like 0.1. And then later on, if it's too fast or too slow, we can adjust the wait time. Okay, let's go ahead and run our program so far and see what we got. Okay, and we see our part is moving. And it's gonna continue to move. So to be able to set up bounds for it to go back and forth, let's go ahead and head back to the script. So in our script here, we need to say at some point, we need to change directions. The first thing we're going to do to accomplish that is we're going to make another variable. So we're going to call this one local and then direction. And at first, we're going to set this equal to one. And then what we're going to do is right here under vector.new, we're going to say one times the direction. And we'll be alternating this direction variable between the number one and negative one. So in this section right here, once it's done with the operation, it'll either be one or negative one. Next, to set up the bounds, we're gonna use if statements. So we're gonna say if part dot position. So part dot position is composed of three numbers, an X, a Y, and a Z. We just wanna look at the X part of it. So we're gonna say dot X, and we're gonna say if that is greater than 25, then what we're gonna do is we're going to change this direction to negative one. And what that'll do is once it gets to a X position of 25, it'll change direction to negative one, which will result in this becoming negative one, which will change the direction of the part. Okay, when it's going the other direction, we're gonna say if part dot position dot X is less than negative 25, then what we have to do is change direction back to one. So we're gonna say direction equals one. Okay, so the way this program works is we're continually changing the X position of a part by one. And then we're saying if it gets to a certain position on the right hand side, we're going to change direction to negative one, which will reverse the direction of the part. And then heading in the left direction, if it gets to a certain point, we're changing direction back to one, which will move it the other way again. And since this isn't a while true loop, it's just going to continue repeating that over and over again. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. I see that it's moving to the right, and then once it hits that position right over here, then it changes direction and heads to the left. And then at some point over on the left-hand side, it does the same, and then changes direction. So let's go ahead and take a look at the script and see how we can modify this. So let's say instead of the X direction, I wanna change the Y direction, which will control the up and down movement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this from the X position to the middle part, which is the Y position. And then I'll change this to zero so it doesn't change the X anymore. And then I'm gonna change this bottom one to zero and then change these to Y's. And actually let's change this value to one. And then what we're gonna do over here is we're going to move our part up a little bit. 
so that its position for the Y value is greater than one. And then we're gonna come up to the top here and anchor our part. That way when it's going up, it doesn't continually try to fall back down. Okay, let's go ahead and run our program. So now the part's going up and down between a position of one and 25. So if you're trying to add this to your game, what you can do is just move the part back and forth while looking at the position property of your part to see what the balance need to be. So what I can do is move it to the right to the farthest position I want it to go and then take a look at that value right here which is about 16 and then I can move it all the way to the left to the furthest position I want it to go that's negative 33 and that would be my bounds for these two right here. So the bigger number would go right here and the smaller one would go here. Okay so in this video what we did is we used a while true loop to continually change the position of a part and then we check boundary points to know which direction to go. This is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.